a very good morning to all of you this is the 22nd lecture for the subject power system in 2 in the previous lectures we had discussed regarding what do you really mean by lightning what is the definition of lightning that is the electric discharge between the cloud and the earth or between the two clouds or between the charge centers of the same cloud the electric discharge which happens that is that means the concept of lightning so there are two ways in which lightning can occur the first way is the uh, direct lightning stroke and the second way is the indirect lightning strokes in the yesterday lectures we had discussed in detail regarding the direct lightning stroke and the indirect lightning strokes we had also discussed regarding uh, how the cloud acquire the charge so there is one famous theory when the moist humid air go above the ground while it reaches the sky the when the moist air uh, when it uh, strikes with the dry air the friction produced by the striking of the dry air results in the production of the charge so some clouds are positively charged some are negatively charged we are discussed in detail so today in this topic we are going to discuss the harmful effects of lightning and what are the various techniques available to protect our equipment against the lightning stroke which ultimately causes the over voltages in the form of surges which in turn uh, develops the traveling waves which is harmful to the electrical equipments attached in the substation so in this topic uh, but uh, we will going to discuss what are the harmful effects of lightning a direct or indirect lightning stroke or a, on a transmission line produces a steep fronted voltage wave on the line okay uh, whether the lightning is through direct stroke or the whether the lightning it's is through indirect stroke on a transmission line it produces a steep fronted voltage wave on the line the voltage of this wave may rise from 0 to the peak value perhaps 2000 kV in about 1 microseconds okay jo voltage hai is wave ki that may rise from 0 to peak value the range may be about 2000 kV but because of the temporary nature of the fault it reduces to 50% of the peak value in just about 5 microseconds but in this time slot there is a considerable damage to the equipment installed to our substation or the power station in substation there is a greater damage to transformer circuit breakers relays uh, in power stations uh, there are generators connected meters connected so meters is everywhere in substation or power station so there is a great loss to these equipments during such during these conditions so such a steep fronted voltage wave will initiate due to these steep fronted voltage wave it will initiate the traveling waves along the line in both the directions with the velocity dependent upon l and c parameters of the line so the traveling there are three points which we need to discuss in detail the traveling waves produced due to lightning surges the traveling waves produced due to lightning surges will shatter the insulator and may even wreck poles okay jo hamari traveling waves hain those produced due to the lightning surges it may shatter the insulators it may flash over the insulators and may damage the poles if the traveling waves produced due to lightning hit the windings of a transformer it can provide a considerable damage to the transformer is in case of substations or to the generators in case of power stations okay if the surges somehow approaches the terminal uh, hit the windings of the transformers or generator it may cause the considerable damage third point is if the arc is initiated in any part of the power system by the lightning stroke agar hamari arc initiate hogi kisi bhi power system ke part mein by the lightning stroke this arc will set up very disturbing oscillations in the line and may damage the equipments connected to the line agar due to this 
lightning surges if arc is 12 it may cause considerable damage to the equipment installed in the substations or the power station there are many meters installed in the substation relays insulators so it may cause a considerable damage to the meters as well or the transformers connected to the substation so what are the various uh, techniques available for the protection against lightning is the various techniques available for protection against lightning is earthing steam overhead ground wires and lightning arresters are surge, surge diverters okay and there are another surge absorbers okay lightning arresters surge diverters surge absorbers so we will discuss in detail later on what is the difference between the surge diverters and the surge absorber let us first discuss regarding the earthing screen so earthing screen generally provides the protection to the substation by providing a network of copper conductors overhead the equipment installed in the substations the network banata hai copper conductors ka but the condition is that the network of copper conductors uh, at the both ends connected to the earth should have a minimum resistance so that in the case of over voltage or over current it can easily be grounded the earthing screen both the footings should have very low resistance the only limitation with the earthing screen is that it cannot provide the protection against the switching surges or traveling waves it only provides the protection against the direct lightning storm so the second protect type of protection is overhead ground wire so for explaining the overhead uh, ground wire uh, you just look at this figure so this is a cloud okay so this is a cloud which discharges okay due to the lightning a ground wire is placed above the line conductor at a certain distance okay if lightning occurs above the line conductor to the ground wire if lightning occurs so what happens there uh, all the uh, excessive current in kilovolts 5 to 10 kilovolts excessive current will flow across this ground wires the only con concept is that uh, resistance of the tower to which grounding wire is connected should be kept as low as possible so that the over current can be easily flown to the ground the footing of the tower resistance is of considerable importance in the case of direct lightning strokes all the overhead current must flow through the ground wire in order to protect the line conductors let us pose the formula for this is the potential difference developed between conductor and the tower is vt i1 is the current flowing uh, over over current flowing due to the discharge from the cloud and r p will be the total resistance of the footing tower so so in order that all the currents must flow across this footing footing to the ground the rt should be kept as low as possible okay if we are capable to put the rt as low as possible we can easily protect the line connectors from the direct lightning strokes so in this particular in this particular concept the over the over current flows to the uh, generally the ground wire the only limitations which we are seeing at this particular diagram is that in case due to the excessive current if ground wire is broken it may short to the line conductor resulting into a short circuit fault to overcome this the galvanized steel wire is used as a ground wire but advantage is it can protect the line conductors from over currents by taking all the discharge from the cloud to itself and uh, uh, meanwhile it will discharge through its body tower body to the ground through the putting low resistance so this is all regarding today's topic so we can conclude that a thin screen or a ground wire is suitable for protection against only direct lightning stroke it is not suitable for uh, protection against the uh, uh, traveling waves concept so for the traveling waves in order to provide the protection against the traveling waves the concept of 
uh, switching surges is introduced and will be discussed in the next lecture.